this is an example of how I would suggest and have in the past presenting a new project to middle school and high school students. It allows them to engage in the conversation, help develop the project, as well as allows some space for choices and adaptations very easily with all different kinds of learners. I created these slides on Canva and I started with a question, so how does art affect people? And this will lead into a conversation with the students to immediately get them engaged without having to immediately start creating something or start thinking about sketching, which is nice and it can be something about other people or it can be personal and they can have an example if they want to. So it's a nice open-ended question that a lot of them can engage in easily. And I can always start the discussion as well or prompt more from this if needed. I found starting with a question in this fashion really helps get the kids engaged and can help the kids, um, especially the kiddos who might not normally participate, it gives them at least one place where it's um, easy for them to participate. Next I have a short video or I might show some artist's work just to give them some examples and expand on that conversation and here since I used Canva, I was able to drop the video right in, which was really nice. And I can either we can either watch it right in here, or um, I can open it up on YouTube right from this little button down here, which is extra great as well. And this is nice to have this right in here, everything right in here, because if you have a student who is absent, or if you share this out to the students on their learning management system or LMS after the fact, they can always come back to it and you, they don't have to click a bunch of links because the more the students have to click and the more different places they have to go, the less likely it seems like they are to do it. Next, I have another question to re-engage the students. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't, but this was a uh, very personal kind of project that the students actually um, asked to do that followed along with a project we were already going to do. This was with the war in Ukraine and they wanted to do some artwork about it so I tweaked one of my master artist pieces of artwork and focusing on different painting techniques to include themes that they could use for it if they wanted to. So we asked this question here, do artists have an obligation to insight that change? So th this is a step that I may or may not do to re-engage those students after those some of those examples. And then we talked about why, so it, I have the visual references here and then there's a discussion happening. And um, during that discussion, I could even have this up in editor and kind of add some of those ideas we have. And in my classroom, we did it, I had this on a double screen with a document camera. So we were adding some notes into our sketchbook and I was, and I have a classroom sketchbook that's kind of my like example sketchbook for the class. So I was jotting them down at the same time, and then if a student is absent, they can grab my sketchbook out as well or get them from a classmate. Next, we were talking about the techniques we were going to be using and having some examples up here makes it easier for the students to engage in that conversation and you have some visual cues for the vocabulary they might be using as our vocabulary can be very difficult. And they can draw from these examples if they can't visualize an example in their head. This also has some vocabulary that we reviewed. So two-dimensional and three-dimensional is some vocabulary that we reviewed. And we jotted that down in our sketchbook as well. We talked about our technique, and here I did a demonstration, so I had the students gathered to do a demo. So incorporating a little bit of movement at this point in the discussion is helpful to make sure the students remain engaged. And then next, this is a slide that sometimes I always include this slide, but sometimes I have it filled out already and sometimes, most of the time actually, I have the students help fill this out. So I'll bring this up in um, creator mode or editing mode and we'll fill this out. So after what we just discussed, what do you think the requirements of this project would be? And that's really nice because the students it is a check-in to make sure the students know what the requirements are. And it also makes it where it's in their language to make sure they understand what those requirements are, they understand the language you're using, and they there's no question that they know what they're supposed to be doing. And then I would have this up while the students were working 
So that way they can always come back to this, or I would have it posted around the room if I if you did it that way as well. I use my um, computer, my kind of big interactive computer, to kind of change the landscape of my room for every class. So this is something I would have up there. It draws their attention instead of having it around the room um, for every grade because I teach 10 different grades plus adaptive art in my room. So I teach 12 different groups in my room. And that would be kind of overwhelming for them to, um, and also a lot for them to expect to like find their little area of the room. So I like to use my board for this. And then choices, we talk about what choices there are. So in this one, sometimes um, the subject matter is their choice. Sometimes the tools are their choice. But for this one, it was whether or not they wanted to incorporate our current events that were happening at the time into their project. So this slide has been really helpful, especially for those adaptations as well. So I could also make this more individual for students. I could print it out and laminate it and add things onto it or put it into a dry erase pocket and add things onto it for individual students. I have um, had students who this worked really well for me to make miniature versions of this and they glued it right into their sketchbooks while they were sketching for their projects. So this also is a really nice way to make your projects adaptable for students as well, whether it's a student who has an actual adaptation that they need or just to make art more accessible for all of your students. And then I would ask the students to begin sketching. And they could either work on, they have a sketch of the day, so they could either continue working on the sketch of the day while they're thinking of this project, or they could get right to work kind of sketching out their idea for this project as well. Alright, so there's a little overview of how I might and have in the past introduced projects for middle schoolers and high schoolers. If you have any questions or if you would like to see more content like this, let me know and make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you so much.